Hello everybody, this is Bud. Check this out. Curl. The release notes of the new release of i3 version 4.21. You can curl it, you can view it in the terminal if you want to, but I have actually prepared this a bit and made some hyperlinked uh, show notes here. Um, I, I basically took the, the release notes and then I copied them into a markdown document and uh, added some pull request links and, and uh, notes to myself here. So it will be easier to... <laughs> so we don't have to search around GitHub and, and the user guide so much. Alright, uh, there is one major feature. Uh, this The biggest change in this release is that you can now drag tiling windows with your mouse. Floating windows could already be dragged. For more detail on how to use this feature, please refer to the user guide. And I added that link here as well. Uh, so yeah, we can drag tiled windows. We can drag it. can drag it here. I can drag it here. I can drag it everywhere. I can drag it here. Uh, it's even more obvious when you open a bunch of vid windows. And then we can drag this guy here. And we could drag this guy maybe under everything like that. And then we can drag this guy here it just works and it works great it's i am so Im impressed uh, by this feature and how it, well it was implemented um, it works on tabs you can just drop it on a tab it just works and you can now this is tabbed but let's say we wanted a split in that tab now we have that, so now we have three tabs, but one of them have two windows and it simply just works. It's incredible. Um, this, as you can imagine, this is not a simple thing to implement. And this was actually, the work was started uh, on January 28th. Mike Forrester opened a pull request uh, trying uh, with this, um, the first attempt at implementing this feature but it was never merged uh, there were problems with it hmm, here's a youtube link i never looked into that <laughs> maybe that's cool um, and there's lots of discussion and they went back and forth with ideas and stuff how to actually do this how it should be implemented yada yada i haven't read all the comments here and stuff so we not say so much about it, but we can see 61 comments, 16 commits, lots of discussion, lots of coding. Still, they weren't able to pull it off because it it is a complicated feature uh, to it, because it's a new thing. It's really a new thing, uh, and it's really difficult to just do new things on something that is not new, like i3, which already had. Uh, all its complicated layouts and stuff like that and then just hey it would be great if we just could drag them now when it's here you know it's so simple when you see it it's like yeah but of course and when you know exactly how it will turn out then it's not that big of a deal but it's still big of a deal to implement this actually even if you know how it will turn out but they also came up with the <laughs> concept so to speak so a year after mike forster uh, created his uh, pull request Tony Kriske created a new uh, attempt at, uh, or made a new attempt at January 22, 2017. So that's five and a half years ago, attempt two started. And he also uh, made a lot of, of effort into this, many pull requests and discussions and stuff here as well. Um, still wasn't merged uh, and lots of things left to do in the to-do list here. A year after that, uh, or almost a year, so January 22, 2017, uh, Tony started this one. December 12, the same year, so almost a year later, take attempt number three <laughs> started by Orestes Floros, which is now one of the main maintainers of i3. Um, and the uh, same... <laughs> Same thing again, you know, lots of code, lots of comments, 140 comments uh, this time actually. Uh, but this time 
they pulled it off even if it took almost five years after he started he, he made his first comment and he merged it on july 28th this year <laughs> so this has been a a, a long going uh, um, process to be fair here, I don't think, it's not like Orestes has been working on this for five years. I think he actually put it on ice for a couple of years and uh, I, I didn't hear anything about this. But then all of a sudden here in end, end of July, <laughs> uh, it got merged and uh, now it is part of the actual window manager. These two uh, pull requests, requests here are kind of like bug fixes for this one because they they noticed that there were, was some problem with dropping onto tabbed uh, containers or something like that but seems to work really well i haven't seen any issues i cannot even think of anything i, uh, I would like to change maybe the indicator color you know for the risers because it, it uses the same color as uh, active title bar so you, there is no custom color for this uh, indicator. Maybe I would change that. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't. I I, I think it's so good. It, it's fine. Don't change it. I actually like the blue color, anyways. But the, 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 maybe that's that's one thing. It's it's so well uh, implemented and executed, and documented. Very short uh, little section here explains everything you need to know about it. It. You almost doesn't need that's also why it's so cool that you kind of just understand how it works immediately uh, just by trying it and it's uh, it's worth uh, mentioning that you can either uh, grab the title bar and drag but you can also use the floating modifier and drag with that so now I'm holding alt key uh, to, to move it kind of you know um, so the same keyboard uh, short uh, or the modifier you use to move a floating window you know you can grab it anywhere and start moving old school uh, unix thing you can also hold the right key uh, mouse button to resize and you can also do this on title bars uh, right uh, mouse button on a title bar will resize the window and this ha ha was already working on uh, on tile windows as well uh, the resize thing but not the move thing of course um, if I make this tiled again I can just right click the title bar and then you can resize and this uh, this uh, worked before but you can also hold the modifier and right click in a tiled, tiled container I, I click anywhere now I click here right click here and then instantly go into uh, resize that's really nice um, but that's actually not part of this release that was already there but I don't think that many people actually know about that um, all right, so that is that mega feature added here, and it is the, the, that's the biggest new thing I've seen in maybe any window manager. It feels like it's a new uh, scientific discovery in the <laughs> window manager field, in a way. A little bit. I, I think I will get back to it. There is I. I I know a tiling window manager that already had this feature actually. Uh, we can talk more about it later, but not to get too sidetracked here in the release presentation. The next, th this list are the other features and you will see they will kind of feel a bit bleak now after this massive mega thing here. Um, add client focused tab title color option. I actually cheated a bit here and already added it to the config which I have here. So let's move to workspace one. And um, I would like that in our tabbed container here now. So if I drag this here, no, that is okay. Do I have to drag it here? No. Yeah, this is a bit weird here because now this is a tab you know i have a tab with two uh with uh, two windows in it that are split and of course i can move it like this but it's still now uh, tabbed within the same but if i want to move this sublime window now out into the tabbed container not sure if i can do that because this doesn't feel right no and if i want to create a new tab here 
What happens if I dro drag the tab group? Yeah, then, uh huh. So you can. Yeah, you know, this is uh, a bit new to me as well here, so I'm not. It, it's not bugged out. I, I really want to <laughs> make that clear. And now it's it's just me here who's messing with this. And now if I make this tab, we get a normal tab group of it. Okay, there is some getting used to uh, with this, I'm sure. Let's move these guys to the right here. And then we can have this here. This is how I wanted it. And you saw how easy it is to fix a broken layout and stuff now. Um, I really like it. All right, uh, Sublime, I already prepared this client focus tab title. So it's a new color option here. If we comment this out, comment this out, uh, reload, we don't see any uh, changes here because it's related to, yeah, now we just broke it. So now we actually need one of these uh, split inside a tab. This is what it, you can now, you, you couldn't rise those, uh, these group uh, label things before, uh, but now you can, uh, when they are focused, they will use this, um, this new focus tab title. So that is what that is. Uh, kind of an annoying color there, so let's just comment it out, but uh, it works like the other color options that's available. Um, all right, all right, all right. Release notes there. Next option. This was also implemented, by the way, by uh, Orestes Floros. Um, next thing is uh, that you can... There's new... There's new ways to cycle uh, the different outputs, like the different monitors connected. Um, and I think we need to open here, or maybe we can find it here also. Let's see. Um, mon output, output, let's search for output. Only 157 matches, nice. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's look at the GitHub. I know where it is there. On the pull request, um, th this adds focus output next is uh, really the main feature here that you can use that command. So to focus the next output and it will just automatically choose the next available uh, or it's like an internal list. I think you can actually see the list if you do i3 message dash t uh, get Outputs uh, JQ. We don't have JQ. Okay, then we just have to imagine here that this is pretty printed. But I only have one uh, output activated here. But if you would have more um, um, connected uh, monitors, they would be listed here. This is my uh, monitor DP 2 2. Uh, but if you had more, that would be like monitors in the list. And when you use focus output next as the command that would simply focus the next output in that list. Uh, before this you had to name the output specifically but it also add the ability to um, I know here that there is snippet here of the actual user guide so either you, you write left, right, up, down, primary. That, that was there uh, already, or the specific output you wanted to focus. But now we can also focus next, and then it will automatically go to the next one in the list. But you can also specify a list now, not just one monitor. You could say, uh, you could, could have a list of, of monitors, and then it will cycle that list when you f use that key binding. So you assign this to a key binding, of course, uh, but I, we cannot test it here. I only have one monitor connected and it wouldn't make any sense to, to uh, record that. But it probably works. I haven't tested it. Um, ah, This is an, a, a thing to get used to, I guess, uh, because you used to, as I mentioned there, uh, you can right click the title bar and resize. Before this title drag thing, you could actually click the left mouse button and resize with that. But now you, you have to remember that, that when you left click the title bar, then you start the dragging thing. 
uh, but you can right click to, to resize. All right, all right. Next item. So that's great. Add toggle option uh, to the window to the title window icon command. Uh, this is actually something I mentioned in, in the last uh, review or how to call it about sub uh, or um, i3 releases that because the last uh, release that came a year ago, uh, the big new feature was that uh, you uh, it had support for window icons. So bind sim um, mod for plus shift plus d. It doesn't matter. I just know this is not occupied. Um, Tog or window. How is it called now? Title window icon. That is the name of the command. And if we say on here, for example, this was included in the last release. So mod shift uh, D. And there we see the icon. But then uh, if you wanted to disable the icon again, then you kind of had to create a, a new key binding saying off. Kind of annoying. And let's say control here. So that this, of course, works. So mod control D, turn it off. Mod shift D, turn it on. But now look at this uh, evolution. We can now use uh, toggle instead of having two key bindings. We can now mod shift D all day long and just toggle this icon back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. How much we want. It's really nice if you want to toggle the icon. You don't need two key bindings for it. Um, so that's great. Um, and that was added by Peter Stray. P.S. Stray on GitHub. Uh, then this is uh, kind of a, a fix here. They have updated one of the internal libraries. This is the uh, regular expression library. So when you write like uh, four window rules and stuff like that, uh, there is actually a, a regular expression engine to, that parses. Um, yeah, for example, when you say class equals sublime, that is actually parsed uh, with regular expression. Now they have updated the library here to uh, to the new version. <laughs> and this new version was actually released 2015. So the new version they updated to is already seven years old. Um, so you can just imagine how old this old version was. And I think there might have been a security issue, not a security issue that has been reported uh, in the i3 context, but uh, probably a really good thing that this has been updated. Uh, it was actually prompted by, if we look here quickly at the uh, issue here, uh, it was actually prompted by uh, Debian. So this was a mass uh, bug filing that Debian package maintainers made to all uh, uh, packages that they knew was using this old regex uh, engine. And they was asking everyone, please update to the new 2015 version, uh, particularly if it might ever be exposed to untrusted input. So you can read a bit in between the lines there to see that it is probably really good that this has happened. Uh, so that's good. But it doesn't affect any, uh, it doesn't change. I, I don't think it have any features uh, to the regex. Maybe it does, but I don't think it changes anything really. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Then we have some bug fixes. I3 bar uh, fix default font not being applied to bars if defined after bar block. And now you might think, yeah, yeah, that is probably good. But how are you going to illustrate that, bud? Uh, you cannot do that since you have the new version of I3. Well, I also have the old version of i3. Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. Virtual machines. <laughs> Technology. Amazing. Um, <coughs> open Sublime. And um, font monospace 10. Change that to 12. You see how everything, the bar, the title bar, everything is updated. Change it to 20. Whoa. 
if this is declared after the bar section in the old version of i3, it uh, sometimes doesn't work correctly. Let's try it now. Yeah, you see how the bar didn't update. But the next time you reload, I think it will update. So it gets a bit weird if you for some reason define the font after the bar. But that is fixed now, so uh, on, on the new release of i3 it will also work if you define the, the font after the bar section in your i3 config. That is what that bug is about. Um, let's go back to the new version on Workspace ONE. Um, so this is not an issue anymore, great. Then this one is a bit weird here, um, or a bit weird. Uh, it's really good. I really like this uh, that they have fixed this. Um, it's uh, done by Saichong or Uli Schlachter. Not sure about the pronunciation there, but that link didn't work. Let's just take another link then. So this is related to if you are starting i3 with this program, Exifir, and there are some other Xnest, I think there is a program also, uh, and it basically is a X, uh, X container kind of thing, so it, it's not like a virtual machine like I just showed you there that I have on Workspace uh, 3. Uh, this creates just a simple uh, window with its own separate X session in. Uh, and it's really good for window manager development to use that. That is basically where it's used uh, uh, nowadays, but it still works and it, it's very useful. And i3 has been using it for forever in their test suit. They use this to test, um, to actually do um, uh, tests of, of i3. But if you use it as a normal uh, user, not as a test program, uh, then it actually messed up um, the your current i3 session if you did it from if you were were using i3 as i am now and then i would uh, start an i3 session inside exifir that kind of messed up the ipc socket addresses and stuff like that so they have fixed that so now you can actually do that before you had to kind of restart or log in log out to from your actual real session after you had been messing in Exifir. So this should make like uh, development on i3 much, much easier. It's really good. Um, so that's great. And it's related to all of these. It's it's kind of, <laughs> it's, it seems a bit uh, somewhat tricky to implement it, but they, they have pulled it off, I believe. Update parent split con titles when child container swap position with another uh, child container by J Taala or the GitHub user J Taala. <laughs> um, it's really good because they have created an issue here with some animated GIFs. We can look at those instead of me trying to invoke these issues. Um, this is how it looked before it was fixed. So it's a tabbed container with two uh, windows, Brave and uh, some terminal. And this is the window title. You see how the window title doesn't update even if they move the windows around. So if the same windows change place within a container, it didn't update these uh, split title uh, uh, Thing. Ah, did it again. And we can actually test it here. If I move these around, so I put Sublime under URXVT there. You can see how it updates now. So before before this, it didn't do that. So that is what that uh, PR is. Small little details, but polish that adds up. So really cool to see that. Um, strip trailing white space in bar output names. This is also one of the one simple thing, but must have been annoying for those who encou encountered this issue, because in the bar configuration, uh, here in the bar section, you can uh, there's a, a an option for output if you want if you have multiple monitors, you can specify which monitor you want the bar on, uh, and 
then you just say output and then the name of the monitor and if this name here had trailing white space then it wouldn't work it wouldn't show up at all because the white space would be part of the output name and no one ever wants that so they have fixed that that's great um Avoid graphic artifact. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to test this, but I simply cannot really, I, I don't really understand what it is. But th this seems to be something they have been struggling quite a bit with. Like, uh, they have made several, like, reverts of, of the pull requests because it seems like every time they fix this, they, they break to new things. But now all, everything, at least when I look at the PRs and stuff, it seems like everything is working fine now. But I actually don't know what was broken uh, to start with, but somehow related to, for example, some programs, some old uh, X programs specifically, uh, had the shape option because a window doesn't have to be square. It can actually be like round if you wanted to, but it kind of messes a lot of things up really <laughs> if, you, if you yeah just imagine a tiling window manager and then hey i'm around <laughs> uh, it's related to that stuff uh, and it they have fixed it and they have put a lot of effort into getting this working it it, it was an issue that was opened on um, october 26 2018 so this is a a long standing uh, itch that they have finally scratched for the last time hopefully uh, and uh, it was uh, completed here by uh, Tristan Giles or TB Giles on github this uh, yeah no, don't mind this it's no I, I was mistaken there but this is um, kind of internal stuff uh, they man someone found the actual documentation it is kind of a funny yeah, let's open it let's open it because it is funny let's let's look at it this is this is the time when things like like this gets attention you will see what i mean here so is closed and is merged there someone had already searched <coughs> for it nice um it's not that I know it's not that old wait is close is merged there don't know what happened um, it's this right there it is, motif restore B as normal. I was like curious when I saw this uh, getting merged, uh, what it was really about. So I, I peeked a bit, I didn't understand anything. Uh, I looked at the changed files and then I noticed a funny comment because I understand comments, you know. Uh, it's almost like reading source code. So this is the old funny comment here. Uh, this implementation simply mirrors <coughs> Gnome's Metacity official documentation of this uh, hint is nowhere to be found so uh, they, it's about some data type that uh, was undocumented because the documentation was kind of lost the time this is like all the motif x stuff really weird stuff here but someone have found or someone i guess it is uh, the author of the pr here have actually found um, the documentation it's this, it's vendor shell. So I think this is what this is about. They have found the, the, the API documentation for it and implemented, implemented it correctly, not simply just mirroring Gnome's implementation without really knowing what, they, what was going on. I don't think it makes any difference to anything really, but I, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's probably a good idea. At least it's really good to know where the documentation for things are. And this was also probably something that a lot of other uh, window managers and similar things were doing just uh, yeah we copied this from GNOME and GNOME probably copied it from someone else and so on and so But it's here, it's on the Linux die.net man3 vendor shell in case you are interested Just thought that was funny that that comment has been there <laughs> We don't know what this is, the doc documentation is lost 
Um, fix wrong failed IPC reply on move workspace to output. Yeah, yeah, we can we can actually test this now with the virtual machine here. Uh, and since we have this open, this is my output. And there is a um, functionality in i3 that you can actually move uh, the whole workspace to a different monitor if you want to. i3 message move work move workspace to output and then you say the name of the output here. Uh, I only have one output connected uh, so if I move the workspace to the same output it already is on nothing happens of course. But before they fix this, you got an error if you try to do that. If you moved the, the workspace to, to the same monitor, it was already on. Uh, so that is what they have fixed. We don't even have to test it. It also doesn't make that much sense now when I think about it, because uh, <laughs> this is, these are just like virtual monitors. Uh, if we do X render, it's like called virtual one. Uh, but I think it's the same error here i3 message move workspace to output virtual one and then no output false no cannot do uh, this is what they have fixed i believe minor thing but uh, good this next one is quite cool because it uh, it's a it's just a typo that has been fixed um, and um, yeah, the failed IPC was uh, fixed by Orestes Floros, and this next one is fixed by Erge or Gergely Risco, and it is a typo um, that I think might have been introduced in the last uh, release of i3. So we can see this is how it used to look: wm underscore s. It was supposed to only be wm because underscore s is actually automatically added later in the blah 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 so that small little typo uh, makes sure that um, i3 correctly uh, uh, broadcasts itself as a window manager before this no one knew who the window manager was and if you have watched my earlier videos here, you know that I have been messing around with uh, XFCE 4 panel. I think we go to the broken, <coughs> the old version here. And then I start XFCE 4 panel here, for example. And you will see it takes super long time to start it. And the reason it takes super long time is because it doesn't know who the window manager is. You can bypass this test for the window manager with this uh, command line option, but then you have to know that that command line option exists and add that for every program that does this. And who knows how many programs actually care about this, you know, and it's super fast. So you could fix it in quotation mark by that. But in the new version of i3, whoops, um, it's related to this. With this fixed, uh, XFCE now knows who the window manager is and we don't need that option. Um, it's super fast immediately. Uh, anyways, it's great. So that is, uh, I'm really happy about that. And who knows how many other programs uh, actually waits for, for the window manager. Uh, and this might make a big, bigger difference than, than we imagine. Then these are more like uh, crash fixes and stuff like that. Um, but it, very good that those are fixed. So if you had a machine with 256 gigabytes of RAM, you can now log properly. That's great. <laughs> um, some mouse moving between monitors. I haven't tested it. It's probably really nice for those with multiple monitors. Some weird endless loop fix here with transient four windows. I think this was kind of a fringe thing. It looks more serious than it was, I think. But still very good if it's fixed. Uh, fix seg fault if command in bind sim is empty. We can actually emulate this in the config here if you add a key binding bind zoom um yeah we can use the same mod 4 plus sh shift plus d and then no command this will crash i3 
if you try to reload the config with an empty key binding. That is kind of a serious uh, thing. It would be better if it kind of error, errored out and that is what it does now and you see this, this really crashes everything. Not so good. And the, the problem now, yeah, we have to fix it immediately. And the problem is I cannot log in now either because now the config is broken because of that. So that is kind of annoying. Uh, let's just use another session and remove that line. Use some applications, development, sublime text. And then we comment this line out. This is not so good there. And now log out. Yes, okay. Uh, sorry for this. Just wanted to. There, nice. All right. Because if you add it now, it will not crash. You will get an error instead of saying that, hey, you need a command. So if we remove this icon toggle thing here, just have an empty key binding. And this could easily happen, you know, that you have a, now, now you get an error like this instead. So that's probably a lot better than it crashing. Um, then this guy, no, I wasn't able to trigger this uh, uh, crash, but it's something related to if you explicitly say default mode, you could also crash it. Uh, but I think this one was probably quite common, this crash. This is more fringe, but still great that they fixed it. Um, crash with long commands. I never encountered this uh, and I execute very, very long commands with i3 sometimes, but I have never encountered this crash, but it's really good if that is fixed. Contains nested variables, haven't really tested it, but also same thing, great to fix these weird, uh, because they are also, the, all these issues are these weird things that is really hard to pinpoint what is actually wrong uh, if you don't get proper error messages and stuff. You really don't want crashes uh, no matter what. Some documentation additions here for clarifying uh, workspace n and workspace number n, the difference can be good to know. Um, IPC documentation, D menu de desktop, some weird problem with trailing backslashes in specific desktop files, not sure, uh, never used that anyways, but great for those who use D menu desktop. Um, i3 sensible pager, uh, they have fixed, like, if you had a less environment variable set up uh, with a custom flags, it's, I, I don't think this is common at all, but if you had, then it, uh, the, the less thing, and the less thing is uh, this thing. If we add a broken key binding, show errors, this is the less thing. That kind of just, uh, cr uh, you couldn't read errors. It, it's simply close the window if you had that environment variable um, set up in a specific way before. Uh, I don't think we have to, to look into it, but maybe maybe this is something that has never been working for you, that uh, error screen. Now try it now with this release, it might work. Uh, all right, that, that's everything. And extremely good release in my opinion uh, and this feature amazing uh, mind blown really by this um, so uh, uh, um, the last part of the show note is like the list of everyone who has contributed to uh, or the last part of the release note or everyone who have contributed to this release so big thanks to everyone who have done so and especially to Orestes uh, Floros who implemented the tiling drag but he have also been by far the most active contributor here uh, been involved in many of the other uh, pull requests as well in discussions and stuff so he, he has really done a, a massive uh, work here on this release uh, but everyone on this list, I will buy you a beer if I ever, <laughs> if I ever meet you. Um, but the rest is, I will uh, maybe also buy you two beers or 
a pita gyro if that's what you like. Um, thank you so much. Uh, but as I mentioned also, this tiling drag, even if I said that it feels like a new discovery in the science of tiling window managers, I would quickly like to make a shout out here to this guy because it, he really deserves it. Um, GitHub Phil Bush. I think I have quickly mentioned this uh, in the past. Uh, but Phil Bush is uh, a really cool person. Uh, or Senina. Um, he has a window manager that I'm not sure that many people know about. But here, Shod. And Shod is a mouse based window manager, but it's also a tiling window manager that supports tabs. And it have always supported, or I think it always have supported, uh, dragging tiled windows. Uh, here's a screenshot of it. And you can see how he have different tabs in different ways, but it's also tiled. And it's also kind of floating tiled containers like this. Um, and here um, you could simply just drag the, the tabs, just grab a tab and, and drag it. And then you... Uh, how it worked here was that you simply just saw where, yeah, you saw the tab while you was dragging it, the actual tab button, but not the content. And then it kind of implemented itself where you dropped it. Uh, and I that is kind of how I imagined it would be implemented in i3 as well. But it feels like it they, they did a completely different thing here. And I really like the way it works in i3, but it works really well in Shod as well. Um, Mm. But the benefit with the i3 uh, uh, take on it is that you can uh, really fine tune where you want, what type of split you want for, for, for the thing you're dragging, you know. I, I think it's excellent, excellent feature, but uh, Phil Bush, he did it, did it first. And he also, <laughs> he also have really cool window decorations and stuff. It, it's a great window manager, this. It, it is a shame that it isn't uh, uh, more known. Um, and it's very, it's super lightweight. So you can build this in, in like uh, 10 seconds. It, uh, very few dependencies also. Just highly recommend checking this out if, if you have a rainy day someday. All right, um, I actually made a video earlier today uh, where I built the new version of i3 from source in, in the virtual machine um, and installed it and also deinstalled it and showed you how that worked and stuff. It, it was like an hour long video and I guess this is also an hour long video now, but it got a bit weird and I really don't feel like doing it again, but I might uh, actually upload that video maybe maybe not we'll see well, who cares this is a day for celebration uh, celebrating our new feature we can move tiled windows can you do that can you do that in in um, uh, dwm can you do it in awesome maybe you can i don't <laughs> maybe you can actually do it in awesome but can you do it as well as we i3 users can? I don't, I doubt, I doubt. Pressing X. Yeah, see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.